Well, I'm on the phone with head football coach Mark Shields from MDI High School. And coach, prior to the game Monday, uh, Friday night, the officials came in and they advised the timekeeper and everyone in the booth about running time because uh, I think they thought that Winslow was going to take a, at least a 35-point lead as they done against everybody else so far this season. But uh, you guys shocked everybody and, and actually had the lead for a time in, in the first half. Tell us about the game on Friday night. Yeah, you know, I mean, we told the kids going in that, you know, our one of our big goals was to not be fearful of playing Winslow. Um, you know, I think a lot of teams, when they step on the field against them, because they are a very physical team and they're so well coached and, you know, they can put a lot of points on the board and play great defense and special teams that a lot of teams will start out kind of, I don't know, hesitant, you know, timid a little bit. I'm not sure that's the right word, but, you know, basically sometimes Winslow has already won the psychological game before you even kick off. And, you know, we talked to the kids a lot last week about, you know, we will not be intimidated by Winslow and, you know, we're going to play our game and, uh, We'll give them everything we have and, and see where the chips fall. And, you know, I was so happy with the kids, so proud of them, the way they played. I mean, they really did step up to the challenge. They were excited about the challenge. And, yeah, sure enough, uh, you know, they get their first drive, and we create a turnover, and we drive right down the field and punch it in. And that was huge for us because when you're trying to, to play with a team like that, you know, if you can get an early break and get up on them, it really does show your own kids that, wow, you know, we can play with these guys. And it didn't take long. I think that first defensive series. You it know, was five, a, six plays. Yeah, I mean, we, and, and they didn't really move the ball other than they hit a long pass, which they, you know, that's something we need to clean up, but we can talk about that later. But, um, you know, I think the kids knew right off quick that, wow, we're, you know, physically we can hang with these guys. And sure enough, offensively we drive it down and score. And, you know, the, the kids just, they, they really did believe, and, and that just sort of, you know, reinforced that belief. So, yeah, I told the kids after the game, you know, that I was super proud of them. And, you know, our goal every week, no matter who we play, is that we want to get better as a football team. And even though we did lose the game, I felt we got better overall. It, it kind of reminded me of the Mount Blue uh, playoff game, what was it, three, four years ago, um, where you got blown out the first time playing down there and then came back and almost won that. And boy, I'll tell you when, uh, John Phelps had scored that and, you know, he had such swagger in that game. And it, we talked about that kind of being his, you, you could see him grow into the quarterback. And it, this may be the, the game that Andrew Phelps has, has grown into a quarterback as well. Yeah, definitely. And we talked a lot about that, uh, Mount Blue game to the kids all week long and, and what it took that week to prepare for Mount Blue. You know, they were a, a better opponent than us and by a long shot that year, I thought. Um, not so much this year with Winslow and MDI, but, you know, we talked to the kids about getting out early and, and that night against Mount Blue, we did that. We had the, the first drive and even though we didn't score, we took, I don't know, seven or eight minutes off the clock and once again, the kids started to believe that they could play with that team. And, and sure enough, like I said before, you know, the kids, we started out well right from the get-go and, uh, you know, believing that they, they could play with them. And, yeah, you know, Andrew, he's a guy that's been around, of course, athletics his whole life. He's, I mean, that's one of the most athletic families on this island, the Phelps family. And, you know, and, and he's just been around that. I mean, you saw him last year in basketball as a freshman, and, and he's making big plays you know, on the Bangor four up there and in the cross center. And, you know, so for him, I don't think he presses the panic button, even as a, a sophomore, because he's just been in that situation so many times in his life. So, yeah, I mean, it was a big game for him. Uh, he, you know, he, he played very, very well. And, you know, once again, we can all learn from some of our mistakes, um, you know, himself included. And uh, we're going to get better from that, you know, and that's, that's, the key for us is just to continue to improve throughout the season, and hopefully, you know, you're playing your best football come playoffs. When you and I talked over the summer, 
Uh, we never imagined in, in our wildest dreams that MB, MDI would be two and one at this uh, at this stage of the season. Yeah, I mean, we could have easily been zero and three right now, and you know, knowing that zero and three is it's tough to to battle back from that because you feel like, oh boy, we're so far in the cellar right now. Can can we you know dig our way out here? But um, yeah, to, to be two and one. If somebody asked me, you know, would you be happy to be two and one after the first three games? And I would say absolutely. And you know, of course, then you get to two and zero, oh and you want to be three and zero. Oh, right. But you know, it. Uh, you know, once again, kind of like that Mount Blue loss we talked about. I felt the best after that Mount Blue loss, and I felt after a lot of wins, and, and I kind of felt the same way against Winslow last Friday night. That you know, I felt really good about the way that the team played. All right, so what do you work on this week? Obviously, I think there's some, uh, in, in calling the game, uh, pass coverage is going to be an issue. Yeah, for sure. That was a, a major weakness. You know, you just cannot give up big pass plays. You know, it's hard enough to stop people's run game, and that's really what most teams want to do is run the ball. But if you stop their run game, they're going to start throwing the ball, and, and we have to get better at that. We gave up two, three, four big pass plays that just hurt us in you know, and it allows teams to keep drives alive. And, and, you know, when they're long pass plays, obviously they're picking up some, some big yardage on that as well and getting ready to score. So, yeah, our defensive backs, they're, they're going to work pretty hard this week. And, you know, it's another week for us to get better as a team. You know, I don't think adding a bunch of new stuff is what we want to do. I think we, you know, if anything, at this point in the season, you really start to simplify what you're doing, kind of look at, okay, this is what you have in for your offensive plays. What's working? What isn't? You know, what can we get rid of? What can we keep? Um, defensively, same thing. Special teams. So I think you know you start to simplify things and just rep those things over and over again to, to keep getting better. Um, it, there's. It seems like you know. Obviously, you've got Winslow uh, on top um, at three and zero. Oh. Old Town is at three and three and zero. Oh. Madison at two and one. MDI two and one. And then you've got, uh, it's very interesting. I mean, you've got uh, it, Waterville's now at 1 and 2, Belfast 1 and 2, Oceanside 1 and 2, Bapst 1 and 2, Foxcroft Academy 1 and 2. Yeah, I mean, there's some parity in the conference for sure. And it seems like there always is. I mean, I look at, you know, you look at a team like Belfast and Foxcroft, if they start getting healthy. Nobody's going to want to face those guys in the playoffs, right? You know, so it's it from top to bottom. You know, I think we proved that the conference is tighter than what people thought with us being able to play with Winslow and you know and and Foxcroft and Belfast playing with us. So that tells us right there that that they're in the mix to beat Winslow as well. So you know, it's it's really exciting to have a year like this and and have the quality of teams out there. And you know, you never know how it's going to shake out. You know. The worst thing you want to do is start looking at the schedule, saying, "Well, that's probably a win. That's probably a win. you know, that's not what you do. You know, you, you like I said, you just got to keep getting better every week. And all our focus now turns to Herman and and getting better and and trying to get a win up there. And last year we went up there and it was a dog fight. I mean, right. they battled us right to the end. And I expect the same thing this coming Friday night. So, uh, what do you work on this week, and and the, what's the health of the team? Yeah, the health of the team is is really good right now. Um, I have some guys headed to Winslow today for a JV game, and I'm hoping that everybody comes back healthy. Right. But overall, you know, I think our health is pretty good. you got your typical kind of, I call them the ooey and owies. You know, you sort of play with some, some pain in your body because it's a contact sport. But overall, we're, we're pretty good on that front. And, and then, like I said, you know, just keep getting better at what you're doing and keep working the fundamentals. And, you know, there's always stuff to improve upon. I mean, we made a lot of mistakes the other night, and uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to try to get better. Cut down on the penalties, which was a good thing to see. Yeah, I mean, that night when you were up there, up the door of Foxgrove, that was just unacceptable. I mean, we had all those penalties, and we'd get a good gain on offense, and whoop, no, we're back 10 or 15 yards. So, yeah, I mean, cutting down on the penalties and the turnovers. You know, I'm finding, I mean, we all know it, it's common sense, but it, it really does make sense that, if you want to beat these quality teams, you just cannot turn the football over, and, and we've been working real hard on that. So two hands on the ball. That's what I tell my running backs every time they touch the ball until they get out in the open field. They want to go one one hand. That's fine. But, you know, we don't need a turnover. 
What do you want to say to everybody listening around the world here? Yeah, thank you so much for your support against Winslow. Um, you know, it, was it was a, a great crowd. crowd. It was huge. Yep, it was a big crowd, and thank goodness we were able to, you know, to, to perform, um, you know, with Winslow and play with them so they could see a, a good football game. And, you know, we're going to be away this weekend at Herman. If you can get up there, it's not too far of a drive. That would be awesome. Um, and then the following weekend, we're back here for John Bapp. So please come out and support the guys. They really do appreciate it. They feel it when they see those people in the fans. So thank you so much. All right, Coach. We'll talk to you on Thursday. Have a good week. All right, Chris. Thank you.